All right, and welcome back to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state in the servile society. So I've got the audio version of my newest article in uh, this ongoing ser- uh, this ongoing series, pardon me, uh, Surveying the Second Realm. Uh, but first I wanted to provide a couple of updates in regards to the Free Republic of Pasnia, the Self-Liberator's Paradise. Uh, that website is pasnia.com. So it is short notice, but I will be having some self-liberators here at Pasnia for the holiday weekend. Uh, we'll actually be processing a couple of lambs, uh, among other things. Uh, if you're looking for something to do or are interested, please join our Telegram chat group, uh, the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence, uh, and I can get you the information. Uh, that's t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. Again, t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. And uh, if you uh, go to the, the show notes uh, for this episode, uh, you'll find a link to the Pasnia website. And then uh, there at the bottom of the page, uh, you can find a link directly to uh, the Pasnia chat, uh, an alternative way to get there. And secondly, uh, I don't have a date for this yet, but uh, this coming spring, uh, I want to plan an unofficial Pasnia camping weekend. Um, generally speaking, uh, Paradise will come uh, come over um, to, do, to, to go riding. Uh, Usually sometime, uh, you know, the, when the weather gets nice in spring, uh, and then also um, in May sometime for the, uh, for the first official camp, uh, for the first official camp down here. So, um, yeah, I, I, I want to do that. That'd be awesome. Uh, so, yeah, if you want more information on that, uh, Telegram is the place to come, t.me forward slash Pasnia chat. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much to the, uh, to the number of folks who have uh, reached out recently. Uh, it's so great to see, some, uh, to see so much interest in self-liberation, Vanu, and the Second Realm. Uh, and if you've got something, you can email me, Shane at LibertyInterTact.com. Uh, I always love to hear from you all. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's always great to watch these, uh, these strategies gain in popularity. Good for a lot of reasons. Good for a lot of reasons. And uh, hate to keep this uh, the super brief, or I guess maybe I like to keep it keep it brief. But uh, yeah, I got to uh, it's uh, four thirty in the morning. Uh, I'm up. I'm always up super early, so I figured I'd finish up this episode. And uh, here uh, in about an hour and a half, I'll uh, head out to uh, to the deer stand. Hopefully, uh, you know, get to get myself uh, a deer for this year. So uh, yeah, I uh, think that's all for this episode. Uh, please enjoy this newest article. And uh, until next time, surveying the second realm number three. The Liberating Philosophy and Culture of the Second Realm The following is the audio version of my third article in my ongoing series for Agoras Nexus, Surveying the Second Realm. You can find number two at vanupodcast.com or agorasnexus.com. At the foundation, the Second Realm is a cypherpunk cryptoanarchist strategy. That is, the use of technology like Bitcoin, encryption, and decentralized networks to remove attribution from action, providing radical freedom to individuals. But while this strategy is high-tech in nature, equal emphasis is placed on building physical second realms versus focusing purely on the digital. This is why I became so interested in it a few years back myself. Like Freedom Festivals provide short-term, these realms, quote, give us the opportunity for our culture to exist in physical space and time, allowing us to conduct our business, organize our social relationships, and to handle conflicts in the way we think to be right. It is the literal rebuilding of all necessary voluntary aspects of society, as well as the merging of what I have found to be the most efficacious freedom strategies over the years. Agorism, temporary and permanent autonomous zones theory, uh, henceforth referred to as TAS, PAS respectively, cryptoanarchy, and just security culture applied, again, in the most radical way. Foundational Principles The philosophical, moral, and ethical underpinnings of the second realm overlap with that of voluntarism, as well as ancient and biblical principles, thank the golden rule, natural law, etc. Who would have known? Even our ancient ancestors knew not to be assholes and not to defraud. These two principles are autonomy and peace. Autonomy overlaps with the voluntaristic notion of self-ownership, that you own yourself and the fruits of your labor, and the expression for peace refers to the commitment to property rights. After all, clearly delineated property rights, and contracts in general, can eliminate disputes before they ever arise, minimizing conflict. With this understanding, both moral and utilitarian justifications can be found, especially when considering that the servile society operates peacefully the majority of the time anyway. Hell, most of the disturbances of peace are from bludgies, bureaucrats, that won't leave someone alone. The importance of self-defense and dispute-slash-conflict resolution become more apparent. The peace of the Second Realm relies upon the defense and enforcement of said property rights, since the building of this alternative society means reliance upon First Realm court systems is not possible. And I say good riddance. 
Another method is one of prevention. Trading strategies that minimize the need for resolution in the first place will be covered later. To conclude the philosophy portion, Smuggler and XYZ appropriately write, quote, one cannot be fully human without also being in liberty, end quote. Mobility slash semi-permanence. Whether we're talking about Ray or Smuggler, both recognize and understand the importance of mobility. As I've said many times before, if the coercers can't find you, they can't coerce you. And if you don't know where you're going to be laying your head next week, there's no way those nosy bastards at Google or the NSA are going to either. Furthermore, the nature of the servile society is that of volatility. The ability to leave without loss, or loss of much, uh, confiscation of property, is far preferable than picking a fight with Leviathan. So as we build second realms, the concepts of nobility and semi-permanence, to provide some lasting stability, are important to keep in mind. Smuggler and the other Berlin cypherpunks have settled on converted shipping containers as the best modern iteration. Reason being, first off, they're highly mobile. Since Smuggler et al. are located in a commercial zone amidst hundreds of other containers, they can have themselves and their homes relocated in hours. They're ubiquitous, cheap, and discreet. Shades of Grey Clearly then, in many ways, it would appear that the first and second realm are almost irreparably divided in terms of principles and standards of living. Therefore, some sort of segregation is necessary, even if only mental. Smuggler and XYZ put it thusly, Quote, the clearest of these is that our physical and digital temporary autonomous zones and any interaction between only second realm inhabitants belongs to the second realm exclusively with everything else being in the first realm. End quote. The primary reason this is so important is that privacy and security culture must be practiced in the first realm, which are impediments to culture. Segregated second realms provide optimal safety and comfort, important precursors to culture, art, and other forms of entertainment and relaxation. All of that said, we found that the vast majority are in transition between the two realms, shades of gray, not black and white. Cutting ties to the first realm, building up sustainable independent side hustles, slowly and comfortably moving towards total liberation. For example, total immersing in second realms, whether tasses or passes. 2020 seems to have expedited this process a bit. Later on in this series, I'll discuss the complementary role of the proxy merchant, an individual facilitating interactions between the realms. This entrepreneur, specialist, is of enormous value. It's a potential way to have your cake and eat it too, uh, i.e. still have access to the first realm while living and exercising your autonomy in the second. A Flourishing Culture To pull another quote from Second Realm Book on Strategy, quote, Culture is a spontaneous order that is shaped by the individuals of a society, reflecting their individual decisions and mentalities, end quote. In the first realm, this outward expression tends toward legal, lawful activities taking place in taxed, regulated, and licensed establishments, with consumption of vices being mostly relegated to legally sanctioned, often big pharma-approved stimulants and depressants. The most liberating cultural manifestation in the first realm would undoubtedly be a music festival or concert. And those might not be around in 2021. It's safe to say that the creative and artistic spirit of most individuals in the first realm is surely crushed. As I elaborated in surveying the second realm number two, the culture of the first realm is one primarily of degradation and servility. It is the total antithesis of what's important in the second, again autonomy and peace. Culture helps to weave tighter connections between individuals, as well as creating a group identity of sorts. Rituals around a fire, a rave, morning yoga, literally whatever the culture develops into. This recognition of autonomy and the importance of human life and freedom also fosters a culture of building each other up. As an example, many have recognized this firsthand from attending events like the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, Jackalope, or Vanu Fest. To me, it's one of the most addicting aspects. There really is something to be said about finding your tribe and spending time with those that you resonate with. Instead of the resistance self-liberators often find in the servile society, this energetic force multiplies. Conclusion. We're not leaving the world behind. Some will see strategies like this and Vanu and etc. and think... I I can't just leave people behind, and rightfully so. But this strategy isn't one of escapism or abandonment. Rather, it's a recognition that what is currently ruling over the dystopic first realm is not sustainable and is not in the interest of the future of humanity or even of Earth more generally. We're taking the plunge and building the new society outside of and despite the existence of the first realm. 
More specifically, we're working out the kinks in the coming privacy-centric arbitration systems. We're building the infrastructure of open-source, decentralized tech that will further assist the transition and maintenance. We're building up self-sufficient homesteads, which serve as nodes in an overarching network of second realms. And so much more. In the spirit of Etienne de la Boetti, an anonymous Anerplex.net author writes, quote, The technological part is developed enough. What's needed is entrepreneurs delivering these technologies in the hands of the people waiting for them. For if the people each decide to withdraw their support of the tyrant, and for $9.99 a month are able to do so, the tyrant will indeed topple. End quote. So, build on, my friends, and make some Bitcoin while you do. You've just heard Surveying the Second Realm number 3, The Liberating Philosophy and Culture of the Second Realm. You can find this entire series at vonipodcast.com or at agorasnexus.com. Everybody runs around every day talking about truth, and they're trying to get to the truth, and they want to hear the truth. That's one of the biggest lies I've ever heard in my life. Soldier, keep on marching on. Most people have no desire whatsoever to even get within a hundred miles of the truth, and in some instances, that's too damn close. So my conclusion is, most of you are going to get exactly what you're going to deserve over the next who knows how many years. Some of us are going to rise to the occasion. We are going to shine. We are going to shine. We're going to sparkle like diamonds in the sunrise on the most beautiful day that you can remember that you've ever seen in your life. And we're going to do it simply and only because it's the right thing to do. For the human race, for God, for our children, for the future of this world. And it won't matter what happens to each of us as individuals the only thing that will matter is that we rose to the occasion. We sparkled. We did what was right when no one else would. We said what was right when no one else would. We spent our money for the right things when no one else would. We worked and toiled cause of freedom when no one else would. We took the slander. We took the libel. We took the bullet. We took the prison. We took wounds. We took death. We took whatever was aimed at us. And we will prevail. It may take a long, long time. I may not see it in my lifetime. I may not live to be a part of the victory celebration, but I will be victorious. But all of those with me will be victorious. And we will shine. You all stand around and talk about it. We put on the armor of God a long, long time ago. 